Hi, I'm Greg Sadetsky, and I teach Python at New Circle. Today, we'll be doing a little bit of Python programming. Um, this is for anybody who's interested in programming and has never done programming, or maybe you've tried to do a little bit with Python, or you're just interested into what basic programming um, skills can give you. I'll, I'll give you a very simple situation. We have an event that I'm holding for an organization that I run. And every year I get a lot of attendees and I have all their names and their email addresses in a file, a CSV file, which you might have, might have heard about, comma, separated value file. So I get my CSV file, I have all my, my attendees there, and next year I run the same event and I, it's even more popular and I get even more attendees. But after the second event, I, I think, huh, that, that was actually very interesting. I saw more people, but I'm, I'm not sure who they were. I, I didn't have time to know, oh yes, Jack was there, but Jane wasn't. And, that would be sort of a manual task. I, I don't want to be doing that anymore and looking at lists. So let's program our way out of this problem. And it will be quite easy with Python, and you'll see. And I, and I feel this is a very simple, elegant, small thing that will should whet your appetite and make you want to do more programming and more complicated tasks, which, of course, Python allows. So let's go right into it. I have two files here, the two CSV files you see on the screen. There's attendees1.csv on the left part of my screen. And just right next is attendees2.csv. So that would be the first year's attendees and the second year's attendees. Now, just looking at it kind of far, you know, just looking at the screen, you see a bunch of names that, well, some of them look similar and some aren't. But really, this is the point. If this, was, if this list was very, very long, you would, you, this would be a horrible task that you would never want to do manually. So just to give you an idea, it's, it's about 100 lines long. So one event had 89 people, and the next one had 100. So it was a blast, a big party. Sorry you missed it. So let's just go through, through those files and, and just understand what Python allows and how does this work and where's the magic and how much do we have to be doing things to get some result. So I'll assume you have Python installed, but it's fine if you don't. On a Mac, it's a little bit simpler. Uh, you can just switch over to your terminal, like this, and I'll just enter Python, just like the mistake. So Python, there you go, and I'm, I'm already programming. I'm just, whatever I will be typing now will be actual programming. You're a developer just by writing six letters and enter, so that's, that's exciting. On the Windows, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, you would have to go to python.org. Well, actually, I'll just do it right now. So let's just go here, and the website has changed very recently, so it looks great. So you can just download and go into Windows, and the latest 2.x.x release will, will do fine. So you'll have a little bit more steps, and, but at some point you will get a screen and you will get a prompt, so these three greater than signs, and you'll get to write things and it, will, it should work. If you're not sure if this is Python or some other programming language, well, actually just first, you know, let's just try 2 plus 2, and that works. Okay, so we're, we're dealing with a computer that is answering our questions. So this is an interface that's useful, but just for writing, for writing very short, single line commands. If you want to do some tests, or, or it, it's a good way to explore, but it's not the best way if you want to write a long program, for some reasons, but don't mind that. Just Python is installed, it's running, we'll, we're happy. So let's get started and actually write a program. Let us do some basic things, just again, just to see how this kind of works and, you know, just to get a feeling that it's, the computer is on our side and it's, it's simple to get started and you don't have to write this whole program and then hit, you know, hit run and hope it works and if it doesn't, decide that you'll never be able to do this, which is not a good conclusion. So let us just actually print some nice message. So I will, I will type this, so print and then I'm using single quotes, and I might be using double quotes. Doesn't make a difference. And I'll save this file and call it tutorial.py. So I've got a file. I'll jump into my terminal. Now, if you're in Python, you're kind of stuck a little bit. So to get out, well, you could shut down, restart, but that's, that's too drastic. I would just go exit, which is a command, and then parenthesis opening and closing and then press enter. So now you're out of Python and on your Mac you're in your, your shell. 
Um, so to run the program, it's actually quite easy. So it's Python, but let's pass it a file name. So in this case, tutorial.py. There we go. So you see the output of the program appears in the terminal. So you see the hello is there, and that's the hello that I had written. So what's happening on the Python side? I'm using the print command, which is, I would assume, the very first command you'd want to be able to use, because else really it, it's kind of hard to see what's going on, and is there any output. And, and a print command is, uh, all code is littered with print commands. That's perfectly fine. Just use the print command as much as possible when you're beginning. Um, OK, good. So we, we, we've got some data that's been printed. Um, this is a string, so it's characters, letters. I, I could, there could be spaces here. I could be writing a whole sentence, so let's just a whole sentence. There we go. Let's save the file. I switch over to the terminal. I run it again. There you go. I've just printed a whole sentence, literally. So, okay, that works well. Now, there are other things, data types, that you can manipulate. So, this is a string. It's built up of characters. There's also integers, which is just digits. So I could print the number four, and I guess this will work. It will just print four. You can do like simple math as well. Plus eight should be 12, hopefully. Yes, it is. Okay, that's good. So there are some data types like that. And uh, th there's another data type which is actually quite useful, and that's a list. So things are getting a little bit more complicated, but this is where it, get, it gets interesting. A list is, uh, well, that's, Actually, the, what, what it is, it's, it's, it's a list of things. So wh whatever data that you'd want to store and, and conserve, like a, a string or, or some, some digits, some integ integers, you can group them and hold them in one list. And actually, you can assign a name to that list, so what you would call a variable. So we can create a new list, and that's actually quite easy, just by using the square brackets. And then for every element that you put in, you, you just separate it with a comma. So if you have three elements, and I'll just do word one, and then a comma, and word two, and then a comma, and word three. So I'm, I'm just writing this list. It has three elements. And the print is still very, it's, 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 it's very happy to print that list. I'm switching over to the terminal. There you go. Just printed a list. So this is baby steps. But we're getting somewhere very interesting. Great. So we've seen. Strings, we've seen lists of things. Uh, we should be also, I guess, uh, assigning these, you, you know, th these, these uh, data objects. We shouldn't be just printing and forgetting about them. So let's give them some names or uh, assign them some variable names that we'll be able to use later on in our code. So for instance, this list, I might call it L. So L, and I'll just write equals. So I'm just saying, hey, computer, this is a list. It's a very important one. I want you to take great care of it. I, I feel for it. It's an important list. We've gone through a lot together. Let's assign it to the letter L. And later on, I can do pretty much the same operations I used to do. So I can print L, and that will work. It's exactly the same output. So baby steps, but we're getting there. Great. Now, to read a CSV file, um, you might, and there are file operations in Python. So you are, of course, able to open files and go through all the lines and do different operations. And it really depends on the type of uh, data, uh, of the type of file that you're getting. Uh, is it a JSON file or an XML file or a CSV file? There's, there's a variety of formats uh, or an Excel file, an XLS file. And you would usually want to pick a tool that's adapted to the file type that you'll be working with. So CSV is a very good, simple, relatively standard format. Uh, just by the way, just to confuse you a little bit, CSV format, e even though the C should stand for comma, sometimes you would see tabs or semicolons used to separate elements. And it's weird because we don't do tab separated value files like TSV, but, but that's all good. So CSV is generally data that you can look at as a human. It's not a weird format. And it's just separated by commas, I exactly as, as I have here in my two lists. So let's use a module that comes with Python and that is called CSV. And we'll have to do a few things. So we'll first um, tell Python that, hey, I'm going to be using this module. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, you're, you're letting Python know. And there's a good reason why you have to explicitly import, and that will be the keyword that we'll be using, these, uh, um, these modules. And actually, it's because there's a ton of these modules that some of them are part of Python, some you can 
download and install on your computer. And if everything was available all at once, you would have conflicts. And it just doesn't make sense. So by default, Python provides you with very few built-in functions that you can use. Print is one of them. Um, and then whatever you need, you just import it. So let's just do that right now. Let's import CSV. And uh, once we've imported, it's available. It's a bit strange because you know the text editor is not giving us any clue to that. But, but we know import CSV, we wrote the line, so that's fine. Now let's do some other few steps. First, we have to open the file. And there's a command for that in Python, which you would typically use to open the file and then read the file. But we'll do a things a bit differently. We'll open the file, which just lets Python know that we'll be using this file. And then instead of reading it ourselves, which Python would have allowed us to do, we'll, we'll tell CSV, the module, can you take care to open that file and read it and kind of understand what the file is about? So, so let's do that. Let's um, uh, open the file. So the open command is available, even though if I hadn't imported CSV. And let's pass it a path to the file that we want to open, in this case, attendees.csv. Things can get a little bit more complicated on Windows and on Mac if you would want to have different paths. This is a very simplified example, but the simplest thing is if you keep your Python file and your CSV file in the same directory and you're running Python in that directory, things will work just as I'm typing them now. But it can be more complicated because of paths. Don't worry if it doesn't work right away. So let's open the file and let's assign this opened file to f. So f is now this file. Uh, just by the way, if you open a file, it's rather important to close it. So let's just write it right away just so I don't forget. So to close the file, we'll call a method on the file object. So f is, it represents this object, this, this instance of a file being open. So you've opened the file and the computer says, okay, and what do I do with this? And you go, okay, this is great. And you're kind of looking at the file and say, okay, now I want you to close it. So this command of kind of pointing to an object and, and giving it instructions, like calling a method, you would do simply by naming the variable, so in this case f, and then it's dot, and then passing the, so typing in the method name. So close, and then you have a choice of arguments that you can't pass, but close doesn't take any arguments. Um, if you have any questions on that, you would go simply to the python.org official documentation. Okay, we're really close, I assure you. So we have these two lines. We're opening the file and we're closing it a bit later. Nothing much is happening between them. So let's actually pass our file object to the CSV module, to the CSV reader is what the documentation uh, tells us to do. And this will create a CSV file object which is the CSV file, but parsed. So the CSV module took care of opening the CSV file. And actually, you can give it some tips as to, oh, th by the way, this is a, a, a tab-separated file or a semicolon-separated file. And it has a lot of options. But by default, it will work just fine with this very simple CSV file that we have. So let's type CSV. That's the module that we've imported. And let's uh, invoke the reader function. So we'll just pass it the f command inside the parentheses. So as you've probably seen, open, just as here when I'm opening the file, or reader, is the name of the function that we're calling. And we're, hey, I'm, I'm, and we're passing a few arguments. So in the first case in open, we're just passing the string right in the program. In the case of reader, it's simply the file object. Good. So the CSV reader, we want to conserve the fact that we read this file object. And now we have a CSV file object. So I'll just write CSV underscore f. And now we have a variable with containing the CSV file object. Beautiful. So we have the CSV file object. And what I want to do is iterate over it, consume all the rows that the CSV module has read for us from the CSV file. And to do this, we'll loop over every row, and we'll just print it out. So to use that, a new, we'll, we'll, we'll use a, a, a something new that we haven't seen uh, um, um, as of now. And this is the four uh, this is four. So four is the way for you to iterate over a loop. So let's write four, and then let's make up a name that will be used within that loop, and that will represent every element of the list. So for row, in, you have to type in, and actually you see the coloring indicates that this is a language, uh, uh, just basic syntax. And then I will iterate over CSVF, which is sort of a list. You can, you can think of it just as a list. So the CSV module read my CSV file, created the CSV file object, 
and now all these rows are available to me to loop over them. So I'm ready here. You always have to include a, um, a, a, a column at the end. That's just the way that you have to write a, a for. Uh, that's the syntax of how it works. So let's print, print the row, and I'll move this over. And I'll just press this. Beautiful. So I'm getting this long list of uh, rows that are being printed to my terminal. And amazingly, this is exactly what I have in attendees one. So you see, there's a list of rows. So actually, every time the for loop is iterating, there's one row that appears every time. And if you look a little bit closer, you'll see that every row is actually a list. And it has three elements, which is first name, last name, and email. And email is the third element. That's how we would probably say it if we were just talking between humans. But for the computer, the email is the second. Well, we'll be using square bracket to square bracket. So let's actually do that. So row contains a list of these three elements. Let's only print out the email address. Let's do that right now. So I've added square bracket to square bracket. I'm saving this file. Let me move it over here. And let me clear my terminal and print these again. Ah, beautiful. So now it's only the strings, only the email addresses. That's great. So I'm really, really close now, right? The only thing that I would have to do to complete my task is to take all of these email addresses and let's put them into a list. Let's keep that list around. Let's do everything we've been doing for the second file. So attendees2.csv. We'll do the same steps. We'll actually copy and paste code. It's not the best code organization method, but it will work and it will be clear. So we'll do this for the second file, and then we'll have two lists, and we will see that we can do some magic that will allow us to see what's different between them. So let's do that right now. All right, so I have my email addresses that are being printed out. Let's create a new list, an empty list. So I will I might call this attendees1, and just like this. And this will be an empty list, so square bracket, square bracket. I can move it just down here. It doesn't matter really that much at this point. And instead of printing the email, I will add it to attendees1. So attendees1.append, and this is the method for a list. If you want to add an, uh, an element to the list, that's pretty useful. And we'll then append the email address. So I'll remove my print. And as you see, the um, inside of the for loop, the instruction simply has in this case, I have a tab, but you might have a space or two spaces or four spaces. So the indentation needs to change so that Python knows that this line 10 is within the four. And you don't have to have uh, curly braces like in many other uh, programming languages. So indentation will give Python all the instructions that it needs. Great. So we're appending the email addresses. Let's now print attendees1. So I've created the list on line 7. I'm iterating over every row adding the email address to the attendees one list, and then I'm going to print this list. So I'm going to save this here, and I will print, uh, uh, go ahead and run the tutorial. Beautiful. So now you get this very long list. It's a bit kind of hard to look at now because it's just like very long and it's wrapping along the terminal, but all the, emails, all the email addresses are there. So this is great. So attendees one, I'm done. I have my list of email addresses from my first year, my big party. This is great. So I'll just remove the print because we know it works. And see how I'm just peppering prints everywhere, but you know, I'm confirming that everything is working. So I have this now, this code, and I, I, yeah, I can just you know, kind of move it here, and I'll just paste it, which is sometimes dangerous because you paste and then you forget to change some things. But I'll just, I'll just do this very attentively. So the second file I'll be opening, so attendees2.csv. Now I will be creating another list called attendees2. I will be iterating over the rows, and I will be attending. I will be appending to attendees two. So we've copied the, the code. We've changed all attendees one references with attendees two. So this is the file name. This is just a name that I've decided as a variable. I could have called it B, but it's more useful to have them as clear names. So let's run this program and see exactly. Now I have a second list. Now just to make sure I, I haven't kind of forgotten something or maybe I, I made a mistake, which is quite possible. Let me print the number of emails in each list. And to do so, I'll use the, the len, L-E-N, as in length, function that's built in. 
and you pass a list to len and it gives you a number, which is the number of elements in the list. So let me print the number of attendees the first year and just right after, I will print the number of attendees the second year. Let us run this program. Beautiful. So 89 attendees the first year and 100 attendees the second year. So this is, this is wonderful. This is just great. I'm, this is really exciting. This works. We have both variables. We're, we're this close to getting our list of emails of people that came the second year but weren't there the first year. So you know, new attendees is what we're looking for. So we will now do a, just a little bit of, of we'll kind of change a little bit just what we have as data. So what now we have a list. And um, a list is very useful. It's uh, you know, these elements that are in certain order. Uh, but there's another way to store many objects in Python, and that's called a set, uh, S-E-T. And it's a bit different. Uh, there's no ordering, and a set cannot contain um, uh, duplicate elements. So it's, a set is just a, a set of elements. So you have the letters A, D, and Z, but you can't have many A's and many D's. It'll just be A, D, Z. And there's no order. A list has an order, a set does not. What's useful about sets, though, is that you can do these calculations of you have one set and you have another set and what is the intersection between the sets or what is unique to one set but is so what is in one set and not in the other set and this is exactly what we want to do right so let us actually take attendees one and attendees two and let's transform them into a set so what I'll do is that I'll, I'll still be using the name attendees one but I'll write attendees one and then I'll create a new set by calling set and I'll pass it attendees1 that used to be a list. So attendees1 is now a set. I'll do the same for attendees2. Actually, like this. So then we have two sets. And we will go and use a command that's available on, on, on these sets to see the difference between them. So in the documentation, you can see that there is a, a method called difference. So you would call difference on one set and pass the other set. And as you see, the equivalent, which kind of gives you a good idea, is S minus T. So S is the larger set, that's our second year, minus T, which will be our first year. And the difference will be those who have attended only the second year, not the first. So let us go into the terminal. And actually, I'll write this in my command first. So attendees two dot difference, attendees one. And I will print this. So this is the resulting set. I will go into my terminal. Aha, that's it. So now we've got the list. And these are the actual email addresses of those who have attended year two and not year one. So hopefully this code is relatively clear. It's very short. And you can kind of understand what each line does. Um, of course, you would not have code repeat. That's not a good way to organize code. You would have a function do something and maybe you would pass it arguments if you would want to do that something differently. So for instance, opening a CSV file and returning to you a list of all the email addresses in that CSV file might be a good function. But for now, this is just a very clear example. So cheers, we've done it, this works. Um, in a very few lines of Python, we were able to open the CSV files and loop through the rows, extract the email addresses, create these two lists, then we converted them to sets, and then we saw the difference between those two sets. So only the attendees of the second year's bash and not the first year. So if you're interested in learning more, New Circle of offers Python and Django online and in-person training. Uh, you can check out their website. I'll actually be teaching one, uh, uh, both P Python and Django courses. So I hope to see you then in the class or online. And uh, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.